thank you for um, agreeing to this interview um, for the Georgian audience. And we would like to first present the Bash Language Community for us, collective. Bash Language Collective is a left-wing uh, grouping. Uh, we, had a we have a journal, we have an internet site. Uh, it's a, basically, it's a political and social collective. Uh, bringing together people that are active in many spaces of struggle, from workers' rights and workers' movement, uh, to city right movement, to feminist struggles in Turkey, and also LGBT uh, struggles in Turkey. So uh, it, it's basically a common space that unites many people that are currently uh, struggling in different uh, spaces in Turkey. We titled our discussion uh, The Crisis in Turkey uh, Beyond Perspectives on Geopolitics. So in reality, it would be interesting to hear from you as well how much the liberalizing capitalism affected uh, the situation in Turkey within the last decade and whether this was what influenced uh, the processes uh, that led up to uh, such events uh, recently. Well, uh, AKP came to power in 2002. It was immediately after the crisis of 2001, the great financial crisis in Turkey. Uh, after the crisis, the political center collapsed in Turkey. Uh, the center-right and center-left parties co immediately collapsed. So it was in this atmosphere, in this political climate, that AKP effectively capitalized the, the 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 climate of, of that crisis. There was no, unfortunately, there was no a working class or a left wing answer to the crisis. The reactions, though, to the crisis were uh, uh, stolen, I can say, by AKP, by its, how can I say, by its conservative populism. Uh, and afterwards, it was really AKP that forced liberal policies and liberal quote unquote reforms that uh, made Turkey uh, went away from the crisis. It was the uh, years that, uh, in effect, effectively, the Turkish capital found at last a political party, a strong political representative, a strong strong government, because in the years uh, before, during the 1990s, in Turkey, we have, we have a weak coalition governments that couldn't uh, go after the neoliberal reforms. So, so we had weak neoliberal governments. With AKP, at last for the capital in Turkey, for the Turkish capital, there were, there were governments that had popular consent and they can push neoliberal reforms uh, in effect. So the the outcome was that the Turkish working class had a defeat, first of all, in 2001, by the crisis, by the financial crisis, and by not being able to create a social and political alternative to the crisis. So it was weakened by the crisis, and it was also weakened by the AKP governments by forcing the neoliberal uh, uh, reforms, especially by, uh, flex, uh, by the, the, these reforms of flexibility, uh, by reforms that made working class unable to act like a class. So in the years afterwards, during the 2000s and even now, the political arena in Turkey is divided not between class interests or social interests or social issues, but is dividing, uh, but is mainly divided by uh, lifestyle or cultural issues. In Turkey, there is a great discussion on, on this cultural camp, these cultural wars that represents a clash between uh, the West and, I say, secular lifestyle on the one hand, and on the, on the other hand, an Islamic or traditional and so that way of life. So the Kenyan populism uh, made very successful in polarizing the society, in polarizing society in terms that, look, we are the uh, representatives of the Sunni people, this Western-backed, uh, Westernizing, modernizing, 
organizing elites. It was at least we the people, the conservative, religious, fierce people, and on the other hand, we have these elites, Western Black, etc. So, for example, hey, these Western, Westernized elites, don't let your little girl with headscarf go to the university with her headscarf. So these were the political issues. These were not the political issues. These were the issues that dominated the political arena, that polarized people. So on the one hand, we had the Islamist say of IKP, and the, on the other hand, we had the Kemalist uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. So effectively, the problem for us, for the radical left in Turkey, for the left in Turkey, was to go beyond two of that co cultural wars and stress and, and uh, struggle and put forward the, uh, the, the, the social and class inter interests and make from that a, a political calling. IKP certainly was the, uh, was this for the Turkish capital, for, for the whole, whole Turkish capital, was something like a prince on a white horse because it's a strong government that can push reforms, but by pushing that reforms, it had the ability to have consent from the people that harmed, uh, by, uh, that are harmed by those reforms. Uh, so, AKP expressed until the last years, it was the power of AKP to represent politically the whole Turkish capitalist class. And it was the last years with, the, with those events, I can say, in the foreign policy, uh, with, 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 with this geostrategic discussion, where is the place of Turkey, that the fragmentalization within the Turkish capitalist class. So uh, it's, it, it's not a coincidence that in the last two or three years we had a crisis of legitimacy of AKP. It is not only uh, the problems of AKP, the popular reactions towards AKP, which we saw three years ago in Gezi and etc. These crisis of legitimacy is also an expression of the fragmentalization within the capitalist class of Turkey. Yeah. Even before the coup d'etat, uh, the coup d'etat attempt on uh, 15 of uh, July, Turkey is already becoming it had the character of uh, an authoritarian right-wing populist uh, state. Uh, you know that we have a, now it's 14 years of AKP rule, and uh, this is basically it was a coalition of right-wing movements in Turkey with a strong tendency. It become it came from the Islamist movement. Uh, and it became in those years uh, a party that propagated a right-wing authoritarian populism, I can say, uh, that uh, is uh, aiming a, 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 a party state, I can uh, state that a party state, uh, of course it, uh, an illiberal democracy, I can say, a strong party apparatus that is linked now all the time is linking uh, with the state apparatus. So the party is becoming the state around, of course, the charisma of uh, Tayyip Erdogan. Tayyip Erdogan is the is a central figure in this reconfiguration of the state apparatus in Turkey. So uh, he was already becoming the central focus of the party state that was uh, becoming in Turkey. But after the coup, first of all, the coup was, we don't know yet exactly who were they. Uh, you know that there is much talk about this Gulenist movement, a religious sect. You can compare it with the Catholic Opus Dei movement, which was a coalition around religious, business and political interests. And this movement had a history of 50 years at least. And it had coalesced, uh, it had a coalition with the ruling party, with Tayyip Erdogan, but in the last three or maybe four years, this coalition uh, began to scramble. So it, many people are commenting that 
this was the last episode of this struggle between the Gulenist movement, which we can see now that they had a strong backing within the army uh, and with the ruling party, with the AKP, with Tayyip Erdogan. We don't know yet, we can't be sure, but it seems that a certain coalition of Gulenist movement some uh, generals within the army that were critical of Tayyip. Uh, so it was, how can I say, it? although it had a backing within the army, it seems that uh, it, it was not organized well to, uh, to be successful. If uh, there was a period when Turkey was trying to build a liberal conservative order in the country, where Gulenists and all the other major actors were all uh, in a coalition building the state together. What uh, caused uh, this process to disintegrate and what do you think uh, spurred this event only now? Could we say that the blockage of the European integration process or the slowing down of it uh, uh, sort of caused uh, this type of a dynamic uh, in the country? I think there were two points. One were more, how can I say, the ep epiphenomenon of this conflict is that the Gulenist movement tried to control the, uh, the army, the police, uh, this apparatus. It, it was in 2012 that this conflict became to be seen. And it was uh, the interest of the, of the two parts. The AKP was trying not to let the Gulenists to control. They were controlling the judiciary in a certain effect. They had a strong backing in the education, for example, in the state bureaucracy. But they were not able to control the army itself, the police. Uh, so they, they, they tried to build their power in that apparatus, but the AKP didn't let them. So it was this that broke the coalition. But on the other hand, we can say that the, the, the foreign policy of AKP, which was, I can say, an expression of gaining a, a certain autonomy from the European Union, from the US, in the conjuncture of the Arab Spring, uh, what AKP did with its foreign policy, with this aggressive foreign policy in Syria, in Libya, in Egypt, it was uh, becoming an, a certain, some say, a, a sub-imperialist power, a regional power that had more autonomy, especially from the US. Yulen's movement uh, is more pro-Western, I can say, than uh, say, Tayyip Erdogan, you remember this conflict with Israel in the last years in the Davos, for example, that, uh, and afterwards the event of the incident of Mavi Marmara, Tayyip Erdogan and AKP was trying to build a regional power which would have access to the new regimes that would have become after the Arab Spring Muslim Brotherhood, mainly backing powers, that will come to the power in Egypt, in Syria, uh, and etc. So this was also a, a, a region of conflict between the, these two, uh, these two Islamist, I can say, movements. Uh, one more Western-oriented, and one more, how can I say, a, a power that, although accepts the limits of, for example, NATO. Uh, the limits of the imperial system, they were trying to build an autonomous base of power that uh, in a certain time will also conflict with the interests of the US or uh, the, the EU. So it has some, we don't know yet, we cannot be sure that the Gulenist was uh, the uh, plotters, but uh, the conflict seems to have some uh, aspect of foreign policy, what kind of foreign policy, what can, kind of orientation that Turkish state has to have? Socialist theorists hold the belief that uh, the liberalizing capitalism 
multiplies the tensions in the society by itself and that only few countries can really absorb those tensions and uh, uh, repressions in themselves and countries, weaker states or weaker countries like ours, Georgian or Turkish, probably manage this worse and worse with years and turn the uh, liberal democratic capitalist regimes at the end of the day into totalitarian regimes. And do you still, or do you also hold the belief that this was uh, sort of inevitable or that maybe there is an alternative that we can all be um, striving for and uh, discussing now? I think you're right with the, that neoliberal capitalism makes it impossible for the bourgeois class to have a, 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 an expanding hegemony, to get working class people uh, into its hegemony. So after neoliberalism, uh, you know, that we are talking about two nation hegemonies, that the state, uh, the state cannot absorb people's uh, working class demands anymore. So you, you suddenly you have a strong, uh, a weaker state in the sense it cannot be hegemonic, but a stronger state in the sense that you have a stronger state apparatus, a stronger, uh, strong, uh, more oppression, uh, more authoritarianism, a certain er erosion in democracy. But what differentiates AKP governments in those years was, was that it was not only uh, oppression. It was not the power of the police, it was not the army that we uh, is waging a war against the church. It was also this uh, populist argument, this populist case of the, of the party, that goes beyond, uh, that goes back to the years of the Turkish uh, modernization, this cultural, cultural conflict between West and East with modern, modern, modernism and Islam, for example, we managed to, uh, to make this, this uh, old established conflict, this old issue within the history of modern Turkey, a political argument. An argument saying that, look, it's not the class that is the main topic of the politics. It should be this cultural barrier it is that some modernizing elites took from the people their state by modernizing it, by making it Western, by making it uh, according to the Western in interest. You know, AKP uses this, this, uh, this anti-imperialism of the fools, uh, mainly by targeting some Western interests that never, never targets a certain country, a certain uh, relation of power, and etc. But we are, we are always seeing or listening to them talking about some Western interests, some Western financial capital, Soros, uh, of course. Uh, so I keep a menace to make a populist call by reinventing this, this uh, theme in the Turkish history by making it a modern political program, remaking it a modern political program. So it was not only that the police was being militarized, that we can see, I think, also in Georgia, in the United States, in Europe, and everywhere. It was not that the parliament now uh, had fewer and fewer and fewer uh, powers. It was not that the uh, elections were becoming uh, anti-democratic and etc. and a certain erosion in democracy. It was also the, 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 this uh, right-wing conservative populism was until now very effective in Turkey. So only three days ago uh, on Taksim Square there was a big rally again but this time organized by CHP and other opposition parties to AKP as they say. Uh, and um, who are these people? What are the um, chances that they have and on this spectrum from westernist modernists to islamists where do these people stand this demonstration was organized by the chp with, with, which is the uh, which is the major uh, opposition party the, uh, the history of the party goes back to, to, to the foundation of the turkish republic basically it's, it is the party that founded the republic 
it is the party of the Kemalists, but this party has its own history, of course. During the 60s and 70s, it was affected by the left-wing movements in Turkey, so it, be it became, in, uh, in its history, became a, cen a center-left party, I can say. Of course, it was a massive demonstration, and it was good for the radical left to, to participate in, by participating in that demonstration to, to get back in the, into the streets. Because after the coup, the problem for us, for the radical left, was that although we opposed the coup d'etat, and we, it was a consensus within the radical left that, uh, yes, it's an authoritarian government, it's a government that pushes for a for uh, uh, authoritarian state, certainly, but a coup d'etat will make things even wor worse. So it was a consensus among the Turkish left that, no, no coup d'etat, we are against coup d'etat. But we were unable to mobilize our forces on the street against the tanks, against the, against the coup d'etat, was the relationship, relation of forces, because in the last year, especially after Gizi, but in the last year, uh, Turkish left, Turkish social opposition, I can say, had uh, had bad times in the sense that the oppression was so strong that uh, Turkish left was uh, we, ha we 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 became in, uh, uh, not being able to demonstrate on the streets. It was a very authoritarian climate that uh, had for the Turkish left demobilizing effects. So we couldn't made our opposition seen on the streets, and the streets were controlled by the people of, of IKP, by the party apparatus. So, first of all, the demonstrations against the coup d'etat, we, we should say that, that played a certain role in defeating these efforts for a coup. And it was important, it is the first time in Turkey, because Turkey has a history of military coups, it was the first time that people on the streets were an effective factor in, uh, in the failure of this coup. But the problem was not, of course, people going out and standing in front of the tanks. It, the problem was that they were doing, by, while they were doing this, they had, uh, how can I say, a wrong leadership. Political slogans and symbols that were not calling for more democracy and democratic demands, but slogans and symbols that were, were call, calling for an authoritarian state also. So there, this was a paradox that also uh, for the left it was difficult to go out to the street and to have a saying in the days after the coup d'etat. So it, it is trying now, Erdogan is trying now uh, to at least neutralize the political opposition. Mm -hmm. So it's flirting with the CHP. It was the first time in, I can say, five or six years that Erdogan himself congratulated the opposition leader for staging a demonstration. It was a totally new thing, and that shows that he is obliged now to have at least a tacit support of this mainstream opposition. So for us, although it was good, I think, that we go to the street, it was also bad in the sense that uh, we are controlled in, on the street by the CHP, which, which is playing, in a sense, the game of Erdogan also. But what is the difference between, if I can say so, flirting and the purges? Because we also hear that Erdogan is... Yep. Uh, mm only uh, executing the purges, but you also mentioned the word flirting, so how kind indeed is he? The purges now, the purges, let me explain. It is, I think, the most massive purge in the modern history of Turkey. We had three at least successful military coups, and you didn't have such a massive uh, purge. Journalists, not only uh, military personnel, which one can say that it was natural, uh, judges, uh, journalists, um, <clears throat> uh, teachers, etc., academicians, but at least for the moment, 
the purges are targeting not the left wing, not the uh, left, not the usual suspects, I can say, that is us, but it's targeting the people that had links or are perceived to have links with the Gilanist movement. So, for now, the purges are a, how can I say, it's a familial, a, 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 a inner issue of the Islamist movement itself. It's not a, uh, so, for the moment, because Erdogan is purging people that have links with Gulenists, so it's, he's purging now, it's his old own people. So, not now targeting uh, the left or, or even the Kurds. That's a contradiction. But we all know that immediately after the coup d'etat, we had this uh, <clears throat> the declaration of, uh, of uh, stage of siege, let's say. So that means that the purge uh, that is now uh, getting on, in some months, it, it, I think in, in the one or two months that we, uh, we have, it will target mostly Gulenists. And afterwards, but by this purge, Erdogan is building a certain state apparatus that can easily get rid of other opposition, other opponents, other dissidents as well. That's the problem. So he's staging, he's making the mechanism that this mechanism will have the powers, will be able to purge anybody.